Hey there, welcome back. We're still working in Module 3 where we're talking about customizing the QuickBooks environment. We started working on Section 1, which are the preferences, and I want to go ahead and continue those preferences here in Part 2. So let me go ahead and flip back to QuickBooks and we'll continue. Let me go back on the left to one I skipped over. I want to go back to Payments for a moment. There's a particular option here I want to point out, and that's this option that says use undeposited funds as default deposit to account. Now this may not make sense until I go through and explain this to you a little bit later in Module 4 when we talk about working with payments. But what this means is when you actually apply a payment from a customer, QuickBooks will put it in this account called undeposited funds. If you want the choice to put it in the account that you want at that time, you can uncheck the box and then you'll have a choice. So like I said, you'll understand that a little bit later. Also, if you accept online payments from customers, then you can actually set up the credit card or the bank transfer information right here. The next one down on the left that I want to talk about is sales and customers. There's something here under the My Preferences tab I want to mention and that's the ability to prompt for time slash cost to add. Here's what this means. If you incur expenses in your business that you need to be reminded to turn around and invoice the customer for to get your money back, then QuickBooks will remind you. As long as when you've incurred the expense, let's say you're writing a check and on that check it asks you who is the customer and job. If you have filled that in, then when you go to invoice the customer and job, it will prompt you and say you have these expenses, would you like to pull them in? So that's a great little feature if you need that option. The next one down the left is sales tax and you'll want to go to the company preferences tab for that. One of the things it asked us in the Easy Step interview was do you charge sales tax and here's where you'd say yes or no. And you also can set up some sales tax options that are generic right in this section. So a little bit later when we talk about setting up sales tax we might come back to this and see what some of these options mean. Also where it says send forms down the left you have the ability to email a form, and a form would be an invoice is a good example, or a purchase order. Those are forms you fill out that you can actually email to a customer or a vendor. There's a little, what I call a cover sheet that goes with it, and you can actually edit theirs or create your own. Here's the basic one here. I'll just click edit and show you what it looks like. But see how it says your customer name, it's got the invoice number, please remit. You can edit that to anything you like or create your own. So I'll just cancel that one. And if I scroll down the left, there's a couple more I want to mention. Spell check is here. Didn't make any changes. So under spell check, I can go to the My Preferences tab and check or uncheck what I'd like it to check as far as spelling. Do I want to check all uppercase letters, things like that. And then also where it says time and expenses down at the bottom, I'll go to the Company Preferences tab and here's where it asks in the interview, do you want to track your time? And you say yes or no. And you can also come down and change the first day of your work week or some invoicing options down here at the bottom. That's a quick overview of how those preferences work. You know, a lot of them you could pick out right now that you want to turn on or off, but some, like I said, you may want to come back to later after you've started using QuickBooks for a while and know what they actually mean. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and there's one more I wanted to mention that was not under the Preferences. If you wanted to change the actual address for the company, if you need to put the phone number in, some things like that, you're going to find those options under Company on the menu, and then you'll see an option that says My Company. This is the current contact information you have set up for your company. If you need to edit any of this information, just come over to the little edit pencil here and then you can edit this to whatever you like. A little trick, instead of putting your phone number here, why don't you put it right under your city, state, and zip and that way when it pulls an address block, it'll pull the telephone number for you as well. So I'll go ahead and cancel that. These down here are just some other services that Intuit has that if you wanted to purchase you could. So you can look through those at your convenience. You'll also see your license number and product number right over here. I'm going to go ahead and close that and that's pretty much what I have for you as far as the preferences. Why don't we go ahead and wrap up this particular section and let's go ahead and go over into section two and I want to talk to you about how to work with 
users. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.